Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we finally got the guy rigged and ready to animate. Uh, a couple things that I did here was to, I added a bone right here in the center of the grid and gave it this custom shape. And what that will do for me is that's my uh, master control. I parented the hip bone and the feet bones to this master control so that I can move this around the scene wherever I need to. You may notice that it's moving kind of slow. One thing that I should probably do is to turn off the subdivision surface modifier. So I'm going to select the character over here because I've turned off the selectability um, for the character and the eyes so that when I'm selecting the custom shapes here, I don't accidentally select the character. So I've selected the character and I'm going to come over here to the modifiers tab and I'm just going to turn the subdivision view down to zero. So he should move a little quicker now. Yeah, that's better. So to animate, what I'll be doing is I'll be using here in the render view, I'll be using 24 frames per second. Um, and the first thing I'll do is I want to create an idle animation. I want to create a, a, um, a repeating cycle that can be used for an idle animation in a game. Um, so since we're at 24 frames per second, I think it would work pretty well if I made this um, particular cycle 32 frames per second. Um, I'm going to press the home key here to zoom that in. So the first thing I should do is actually get the idle position uh, set up. So what's he going to look like in that base idle position? So I'm going to begin with the arms, and I'm just going to rotate these down here, like so. And I'm just selecting the bones and hitting R and rotating. I'm going to bring the shoulders down a bit because they're a bit high the way they were modeled like that. I think what I should also do is bring the hips down so the, the legs bend a bit here. And maybe even move the feet around so they're not quite so similar. I'm going to change to global here. Usually when I move things, I move things in global view or um, global orientation. And then when I rotate things, I oftentimes will switch to local orientation. So you might see me switching back and forth like that. I'm just going to move these legs out a bit um, and try and position this center of gravity over his feet. Something like that. And maybe his feet are going to turn out a bit. See how that works. All right. And maybe I'll relax the fingers a bit. And for this, I'm going to switch to local transformation. That's just uh, Alt Spacebar. And I'll roll these in a bit. So they look a little like a hand at, at rest. Maybe turn him in just a bit so he's not quite all pointing straight forward. All right, so I'm going to go with this for the main idle position. And the first thing I really need to do is to insert a keyframe for all of this. So I'm going to select all the control objects, all the bones here, and press I. And I'm going to um, insert a keyframe for location and rotation. I don't really need to do scale because we're not going to be scaling any of these objects here. So I'll do that. Um, and I think what I also want to do is go to frame 32 and key it again here. All right, so now I've got two keyframes at the beginning and at the end. 
and maybe I'll begin working on something in the middle here. So I'm going to turn on auto key right here. So the next time, if I turn that on, the next time I move anything, it will go ahead and insert a keyframe for me. Before I go any further, why don't we switch over to the animation menu set over here and we can see kind of what we've done so far. I'm going to hit the home key to see all of our uh, keyframes in, in the dope sheet. And down here is the uh, graph editor. I think what I'm going to have him do is maybe um, kind of breathe in a little bit, kind of uh, inhale. So I'm going to maybe rotate this chest as if he's breathing in here. And that automatically added a keyframe for me right here. So if I play this, now we've got a breathing motion. I think what I could also do is maybe bring those hips down and forward just a bit each time as well. So maybe at frame 16 I could bring that down just a bit. Let's see how this works. Or maybe I should bring it up. Let's see. Well, that's not too bad. The main thing we want to do is see it from the back, but we also want to make sure it looks good from all angles, too. All right, let's take it back to... Um, let's go back to frame 8 now. And let's see what happens if we roll this head back just a little bit. A little bit too much and what I need to do is go ahead and key it here. Let me key this head here. Insert. Go back to frame 8. And I think I want to rotate it down here. And at frame 24 I'll rotate it back up just a hair. See how that works. Got a bit of a pop there. So here's our head curve right here. And it looks to me like, and I'm pressing control, middle, mouse button to expand the, the curves here. But it, it looks like that's a little too much. So if I come back to frame 8, I can select this one keyframe and hit the G key and move it down a bit. And I can move the other one up a bit. I think what I'll do is adjust this curve so that it's facing up and adjust this curve so that it's facing down and then I may even delete that one there. So let's try that. There you go. It's a little a little better. These two curves weren't uh, matching very well. Move this bit and move this one. I can move these handles to change the uh, size of the curve. All right, let's see how this works. Getting there. I think it's a little too much. I'm going to bring this one down. And maybe bring this one up just a hair. Like so. Let's see how this works. All right. Now I'm going to work on the arms. I think I'm just going to... Um, have the arms come out and then back in during the uh, cycle here. So I'll go ahead and stop that. And let's take a look at the arms here. Now I It looks like I've got keyframes here at the beginning and at the end. That's good. And I'm going to go ahead and give us a little bit of a pull out like that. 
just a little bit of pull out. And I'm going to roll this arm out just a smidge here as well. So let's see how that works. All right. Well, there's certainly more we could do, but he's looking pretty good from the back. I'm going to do some more tweaking, but um, that is the general process I would use for creating an idle animation. So in the next few videos, we'll create um, an animation cycle for a walk, a run, and one for a jump pose. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you then.